It might seem crazy wearing stripes of pride. Hey guys, Mr. Minus is here, and um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about determining probabilities using Venn diagrams. So, in class, we discussed how to determine basic probabilities using the addition rule, the multiplication rule, uh, make sure they're independent. But, and, and a lot of those were disjoint probabilities. And what happens if, you know, especially with the addition rule, we have to have we have to have um, the two events to be independent, in, or I'm sorry, disjoint, in order for us to use the addition rule, independent for us to use the multiplication rule. But what happens if they aren't, are not disjoint? Um, can we still use the addition rule? And the, and the answer to that is kind of yes. Um, and what happens if they are not independent? Can we still use the multiplication rule? And the answer to that is kind of yes. So um, one of the, the things that happens is sometimes we have a case where we can use what we call a Venn diagram. And I think when we get into some of these more difficult, uh, I, I shouldn't say difficult, more complicated probabilities, we want to make sure that we draw a picture. Okay, so the number one rule here is if we can, we need to draw a picture, either a Venn diagram or a tree diagram, just to give us an idea of what these probabilities are doing and how we're going to use the multiplication rule or the addition rule. And in my next video, how do we use that for uh, conditional probabilities? So I'll talk about conditional probabilities. Now this is um, going to be kind of a short video. I only have one example problem and then a practice problem for you, okay? So let's take a look up here at the screen. So um, I have determined probabilities. This is a police report. Now, in case you want to know, this is an example from our textbook, um, Bach, Vellum, and Niveau in uh, Chapter 15. So the police report is that 78% of drivers stopped on suspicion of drunk driving are given a breath test, 36 a blood test, and 22 bolt tests. Now, here's the thing, folks. If you added this together, 78, 36, and 22 you're going to get 136. And obviously, probabilities cannot add over 100%. So you're looking at this, maybe think to yourself, wait a minute, how can these add over 100%? Well, they don't really, because we have an intersection of the two. We have this case that both tests are 22%. So what we need to do is we have two events going on. We have blood test and we have breath test. So we're going to take those two events, and I'm going to create a Venn diagram. So if you don't remember what a Venn diagram is, this is what it kind of looks like. Let's say, okay, so we have, first we have blood test. This is event A. Okay, this is blood test. And then we have event B, which is the breath test. And we have, notice here, there's an intersection of the two. That's where both tests are. So both tests we know are 0.22 or 22% have both tests. So if both tests are 22%, then this entire thing here, all of blood test is 78%. How much are just blood tests, not part of both of them? Okay, well, what we would do is we would take 78% and subtract 22% from that. All right, and that's going to give us uh, 56%, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah, 56%, so 0.56. Now, if this is 22% and all of breath tests, oh, I had these backwards, guys. Um, that was breath test. So let me just erase that real quick. Go 5, 6 over here. Okay, so if all of blood tests was 36%, then we would subtract 36 from 22, and we get, uh, what's it, 16%, is that right? 38, yeah, oh, 36, so it's uh, 14, 14%. Now, what should happen is that these percentages, if I add them all together, those should equal 100%, right? So let's double check, 56 plus 22, is 78 plus 14 is 78. Oh, I must have added wrong somewhere. Let's see, 5, 6, 78. Oh, duh. 
we have um, some people. <laughs> Those should not add up 100%. Um, let's see, 8, that's 90, 92, right? 92. So there's 8% that's left over. And that 8%, I should have drawn my little box here. That 8% is the, the group of people that don't get either test, right? Because um, police report that 78% of drivers stopped on suspicion of drunk driving are given breath test, blood test, and bolt test. And there's probably some people that don't get either of those tests, right? And that's the outside part. These are the people that don't get any of those tests, okay? So let's go ahead and answer the questions. Um, what is the probability that they get a test, some sort of test, either test, right? So the probability that they get either test um, is 92%, okay? Because they could get a blood test, they could get a breath test, or they could get both tests, right? So it's a probability of this plus this plus this. All right, so I'm just going to write that out. 4.14 4 plus 0.22 plus 0.56. Okay. Now, what's the probability they get a blood test or a breath test, but not both? Okay. Blood test. Or breath. Oh, that's and. Sorry. Say or. Or breath test. Not both. Well, I think you can see already what's going to happen, right? This is the blood test. This is the breath test. This is both. We don't want to include 0.22. So we're going to have 0.14 plus 0.56, which is 5, 6, 72%. Nope, six seventy percent. Man, I cannot add to save my life this evening. Must be late after work here. Seventy percent. All right, and then what's the probability that of neither test? Okay, so they don't get anything. No test. Well, we figured that out just a little while ago. That's eight percent. All right, and that we got by subtracting uh, all of these from a hundred percent. Right, that's the people that's left over. All right, so let's take a look at another example of using a Venn diagram. And actually, it's not really an example. It's a practice problem. So why don't you try this one on your own? If you want to know, if you have your book with you, this is number six on page 363 in the BVD book. The BVD stands for Bach, Bellum, and DeVoe. Um, so you can read that through there, okay? So I'm going to create my Venn diagram here. Just checking real quick. Uh, I'm going to be in the way. Make sure I write better this time. Okay, so I've got my two circles. The first one is for married. And the second one is for college grad. 72% are married, 44% are college grad, and that half of the college grads are married. So if 44% are college grads, half of that's 22%. So we've got 22% in the middle. Okay, um, if 22% here, all right, so uh, this is 0.22, ah, my pen, 0.22 here, so that means that married is going to be, let's see, large company, 72% of workers are married, so that means that, my notes here, um, that this would be 50% right here, right? Because we got 50 plus 22, which is 72. And then college would be half of it, right? So we know that this is 0.22, so that both of them add to 0.44. That's it. So let's go ahead and answer. Oh, wait. We know what we should do is we should add these together. Let's go ahead and go 50 plus 22 plus 22 is going to be 94. So 94%, let's go ahead and subtract 100. And that's going to give us 6. So that means 6% are not in any of those categories. So, uh, how many, so what's probably the random chosen workers, neither married nor a college graduate? We just figured that out, right? We just did that, so 6%. Um, probably that is married, but not a college graduate. So, married is here, but not a college graduate would mean that it wouldn't be part of that intersection part. So, that's 50%. And is married or a college graduate. So, it could be married, both 
or just in college. So we're going to add those together, and we did that here. We got 94%. All right? So that's how we use Venn diagrams for solving some probability problems. And in the next video, I'll go over conditional probabilities. See you later. Bye.